Hi, uh, this is going to be a short introduction to Max MSP. I'm going to assume, for the sake of this video, that you've seen some of the things, some of the cool things that people have done with this uh, programming language before. If you haven't, check out some of the links in the sidebar. Um, it's really pretty cool. Also, try to check out more than one link because the breadth of what you can do is as impressive as the depth of what you can do in this uh, in this language. So, the first thing is first. Uh, what are these tutorials for? Um, mainly, I found tutorials online have focused on how to do specific things in programming languages. What I want to do is introduce good habits in figuring out for yourself how to program whatever it is you want to program, because there's too much material for me to cover. So there's going to be introductions to the basics of Max MSP, um, the parts that it's made up of, how to use those parts, how to act if you get stuck at any one point, how to troubleshoot, um, all these things so that you can make a program or, or start start learning how to make programs with some sort of confidence that you can follow some steps to find out potential problems with what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to arm you with what you need to fight your own wars I think is what I'm trying to say. Uh, along the way there will be lots of tutorials um, that include examples, and uh, this one will have a very simple example in it. Okay, so first things first, um, Max MSP. What is Max MSP? Well, it's really, at the moment, a combination of three packages. There's Max, which is a data or number crunching package, and there's MSP, which is to do with music, and then there's Jitter, which is to do with video. Now, for these first tutorials, I'm going to focus only on number crunching, because it's easier to get your head around and I'll uh, discuss the other two subjects as they come up later. But that's where we're headed. We're headed towards multimedia applications. We're headed towards uh, using the Wiimote to affect music, affect video, different video um, tracking and, uh, and affecting programs you can make, different audio affecting programs you can make. Um, that, that sort of area is where we'll head. But as I say, we're going to keep this in a way that uh, it teaches you the basics of how to make a program and how to troubleshoot a program. Okay, first things first. This is a visual programming language, which means that you don't have any of those lines of code that you probably associate with programming languages if you haven't come across a visual one before. But instead, it's like a diagram uh, with boxes and little spidery legs going off in all directions and uh, it'll soon become apparent how this works. So first things first, I've got Max MSP open, and I'm going to make a new patcher. Now a patcher is just Max MSP's name for a program. When you make a program, you'll just make a new patcher. And that's it. This box here will contain all of your program, and can be resized, you know, all the things that you might expect you'll be able to do. Now, in all my tutorials, because I think it's a good habit, and it's something that I do to keep my uh, my diagram programs, my visual programs looking neat. I'm going to turn on my grid, and I'm going to turn on. Sorry, I'm going to, the, that the second one is the grid, and the the first one I clicked on, the one to the right, is the snap to grid, which means that any any diagram parts I make will automatically snap into the grid that you can see on on the screen. Okay, so. If we're dealing with the number crunching part of this, then we're going to have to have some numbers to crunch and some means of crunching them. So in in Max, all of the things, all of all of the little parts of the diagram that do something useful, uh, that change something from data coming in to data going out, are called objects. And here it says double click to make a new object. Now I'm going to go over how to do all the shortcut stuff in a separate video. Um, which I advise you watch because it makes it a million times faster, but until I've done that, I'm going to follow all the more obvious visual ways. So I've double clicked, and here over in the top left hand side, you see it says object. I'm going to click on this. Now, I want to make an object that adds 5, for instance, to any value coming in, a value being a number of some sort. So if I click on plus, space, 5, and then click out of the object box, I will get a, a small box with two little tabs on top and a little tab on the bottom, and it says plus five in the middle. 
So what do the tabs on top and the tabs on bottom mean? Well, every tab on top means data input. Uh, so that's that's what you send. That's where you send data into. And the tab at the bottom is data output. That's the data that comes out of it. So in order to have data input, I need some kind of way of me telling it what number I want it to add five to. So if I double click again we should find here we have a number a number box right here if you click on that you'll see there is a little box that doesn't quite look like this box with a uh, with a zero in it now this is a uh, this is an element that the that we can interact with now if i just click on this little bottom tab here at the left hand side i can pull out a line and connect it like that. So we have two parts of the diagram. Now I'll explain what the second thing here is for and what this thing here is for and what this thing here is for in a separate tutorial but for the moment we're just going to assume that this is done the right way. So a number comes out of here, down here and in this little box which is called an object it adds five. So objects are always doing things. They always, uh, they always create a difference in whatever it is they get. So now I need to find what happens to, uh, to this number after 5 is added to it. For this, I need to add another number box in the same way as before and connect the output, which is the bottom tab, into the input, which is always the top, of the, um, of the number box. Now, here I'm in edit mode, so in order to change from edit mode to use mode, I go to the bottom left hand side and click on lock. And now we've locked, I can no longer create objects by double clicking, I can no longer do any of the things I might be able to do in edit, but what I can do is I can interact with this. So if I pull this number up, you'll see that this value that comes out at the bottom here is this number, the first number you put in, plus 5 it results in that value there. So that's a really simple demonstration of how you use data inside of max, which is the number crunching part as I said earlier, but I'm sure repetition doesn't hurt. Um, so just to review, if I unlock to get back into edit mode, you can see every time there is something on the bottom, it, it is a data output. Every time there's something at the top, it's a data input. So the data comes out of this number box, which is something you can interact with, into this object, which does a, a calculation that, that you tell it to, out of the object, and into the number box, so that the object sets the value of the number box. So there's two ways a number box can be affected. It can have its value set, by a data stream coming in, or it can have a human manipulate the value. So just to demonstrate this, uh, the concept of inlet and outlet further, I'm going to drag these two over here and create another small diagram right next to it. Here we're just going to use two number boxes. and the first is going to be linked to the second. So here we have data output and here we have data input. So if I lock this I'll be able to manipulate it. So say I add, I uh, drag this up. So click and drag upwards will raise the value, click and drag downwards will lower the value. You can see that the box that's connected below it that's connected to the output of, of the one that I'm manipulating matches it. But you can see that the data doesn't flow the other way. So if I change this one because I can interact with it like I can that with it with the uh, with the top one, then it doesn't change the top one because that is an inlet. All that will do is when this number changes, this one will change with it. It doesn't mean that the, the first number will change with the second number, just the second number will change with the first number. So outlet to inlet.
And I think that about wraps it up.